so they can see what's fueling me and make it so attractive that they, I want some of that. And that's the opportunity we have with roll call. <laughs> I just have to start with my testimony of Jesus Christ. I am an alcoholic. Um, I grew up in an abusive family. Mark's story and my story are, are kind of similar, my dad. But you can break the cycle. Hi, guys. Welcome to Bring Your Babs. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin. Jason Whitlock. Jason Whitlock. Uh, no, man, I do like Jason Whitlock. I do listen to his uh, to his program. What has transpired this time around? Jason Whitlock hosted a Rocco event. This is what he's been doing, I think, for two years now, where he invites uh, men to come together, get encouraged, equip men, so, you know, everything that is good. This time around, he decided to invite Greenbeck. According to him, they are friends with Greenbeck. So he did receive a pushback, uh, for instance, Protestia, Pastor Spencer, and some other people to say, if you're having this event and you are advertising it as a, uh, as a Christian conference, how else are you going to have Greenbeck? Because Greenbeck is a Mormon, okay? So whatever Mormons believe is not what Christians believe. So Jason Whitlock was so mad why people are questioning him, this, that, and the third. So, well, the rooster has come home to roost. So now, let's take a look at what has transpired without further ado. Here is uh, Rocco, okay? I. Uh, we go. Okay, so this is uh, what's uh, on Rocco on their flyer, okay? What is Rocco? A gathering, celebration, and encouragement of men to put on the full armor of God to take a stand against the evil forces destroying American culture, Ephesians. Yes, and amen. But which God are we talking about here? Jason professes to be a Christian and a believer, so he's talking about the God of the scriptures. He's talking about Yahweh. Is this the God that Greenberg believes? No, it is not. Next, why is Rocco important? Because it's important that men not give up a meeting together and encourage one another toward love and good deeds. Hebrews 10, 24. Yes and amen, we agree. But by what standard are you going to be in an agreement with Greenberg? Because Greenberg does not believe the things that you believe. On the surface, he will say he does, but he does not. But there is more. Why does every man need to be there? If we truly seek salvation and desire the world to reflect his way, men must present themselves as living sacrifices to our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ. The Lord and Savior of Mormon is not Jesus Christ. They use the language. They don't mean the same. All right. So speakers over here. Okay. And obvious, Vody Bokam is over here, solid as a rock, solid as a rock. John Cooper over here, solid as a rock. Okay, I can testify to those two, I know. Uh, Anthony Walker, I might, you know, you know, he's a good brother, definitely a brother in the Lord. He's also a preacher. I have some differences with him, but it's, you know, it's fine. Uh, TJ Mo, uh, he professes to be a believer. I also have some differences with him, but it's it's fine, okay? that The issue, Jason is the one who put together this, okay? So the issue is is uh, towards Jason. You wanted to have Glenn Becky? He invited Glenn Becky. He put out his defense. He wanted to have Greenbeck over there. The reason why he had Greenbeck there was that Greenbeck should share the history. Okay? He wanted Greenbeck to be at Rocco so he can share history. Well, if Greenbeck is there to share history, do I have a problem? No, I do not have a problem. And nobody should have a problem with that issue. Okay? So this is the problem. When you put out a conference, if it's just men are just gathering, anybody can come. It's not a big deal. But once you start going like, okay, it's a quote-unquote a Christian conference, then you want the speaker who was speaking must be speaking the things that are orthodox, okay? The things that you are going to agree with, biblically speaking, the things that agree with the scripture. Now, just because Vodi is there, because his, his, his rock is solid, I like Vodi, is one of my favorites, right? It, he does not get to validate that conference just because he's there. If, if his presence there is also in contradiction with the scripture, we have no problem but to hold Dr. Vodi Bokam, his feet to the fire. But let's uh, take a look exactly what has taken place, okay? So this is at... Um, uh, this is uh, Jason, okay? 
putting out the defense why he did what he did. So I want you guys to listen, and then we're going to watch a clip from uh, the Fierce Conference. Okay, here we go. Where now he's living into a, he's leaning into a biblical worldview. That's not me, that's God. That's me quoting his word from the Bible to Tucker Carlson and pointing people like, that's the way. Don't follow me, follow God. And I look at the impact it had on Tucker Carlson. And I say we can do the same thing with Glenn Becker, whoever comes to roll call. It's gonna take me all week. I'm gonna be at it all week to make sure this is so easy to understand. Even a baby can understand it. I'm looking at friends of mine, Tro Troy McSwain. He's been on this show. It's my tailor. I'm looking at the conversations that I'm having and the impact it's having on Troy McSwain. And so you look and see some, and again, I'm not attacking the people that have questioned me. Clearly I've done a poor job, but this is what I believe. I'm gonna burn a light so bright that Troy McSwain and Tucker Carlson and a bunch of other friends of mine that I'm not gonna name today, but they're all like, man, look at that light around Whitlock and his crew. I wanna be a part of that. And so you look and say, oh, I disagree with this person and I think their religion is, is a heresy. And I look and say, let me turn my light up so they can see what's fueling me and make it so attractive that they, I want some of that. And that's the opportunity we have with roll call. And so Prestia or whoever wrote the piece, kiss my butt. And I'm sorry for saying it like that, but I, I'm hot. There you have it. Jason Whitlock is hot. He's hot. And he's called out uh, Protestia because Protestia, they put out an article just uh, just laying it all out there like, okay, why are you having Green Bay over here? And then you're advertising your conference as a Christian conference, even though everybody else is welcome. Okay, so the issue over here is just the language. Okay, if you want to have a conference, have a conference. But once you start saying you're going to have a conference and you're holding on to the biblical standard, the scriptures, then everything has to be up and up. And if you say, okay, you want to have Green Bay there, or he wants to teach his history. All right, fine. But we're going to find out if that's all that Greenbeck brought to the conference. But this is Protestia, the one that Jason Whitlock just called out that they can go and kiss. Mm -hmm. So let's just listen in a little bit and then we'll play Greenbeck in his own words. Here we go. Get you friends necessarily. Gonna get you hated. Preaching the gospel, truly preaching the gospel to Glenn might get you kicked off the blaze. I hope not. You know, I, I don't think that that would be the case, but I don't know. Um, but that has happened to a lot of other Christians. They preach the gospel. They've taken those hard stands. They've said um, the 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 Jesus of Mormonism is a false Christ. False. The Jesus of Roman Catholicism, the synergistic, you know, works plus faith Jesus of Roman Catholicism is a false Christ. That's the truth. That's the truth of the Bible. Truth of God's word. And it's not going to quote unquote put, put a good face on Christianity. It's just not. It's not going to um, make people think that you're being a good Christian. You'll be the best Christian you can be. That's just not how it works. You got to preach the truth. And it's not about our good works. The truth is about the, the, the gospel itself. It's about Christ's work, not ours. And so, yes, th th there will never be a day that I regret extending my hand to Glenn Beck and saying, hey, man, I'd like for you to come talk to my audience about American history. All right. So you've heard Jason uh, Whitlock. Okay, he invited Greenbeck. He does not regret inviting him because he wants him to go there and talk about history. So let's find out the history that Greenbeck was giving to the uh, fearless audience. Okay. Uh. I just have to start with my testimony of Jesus Christ. I am an alcoholic. Um, I grew up in an abusive family. Mark's story and my story are, are kind of similar, Mike. Yeah, but you can break the cycle. My mother committed suicide when I was 13 years old. She was an alcoholic. My father was an alcoholic when he died. And child abuse happened in our family and in his family and in his family for generations it happened. And it was my decision after I sobered up. We're going to break this in our family once and for all. And it is hard to do. And there's only one way to do it. Surrender to Jesus Christ. That's it. And that's what our country needs. I just had to pause it right there for you guys. All Glenn Beck had to do was to surrender to Jesus Christ. And the people in the audience are clapping. My question to Jason Whitlock, which Jesus Christ is Glenn Beck referring to? Which Jesus Christ are the audience clapping to? This is the problem. You cannot have, there is no fellowship between light and darkness. 
it's not me it's according to the scriptures it's a different story if you had there like okay you had uh, uh, Graham Beck is the Presbyterian uh, people over there are Baptists okay we believe in the same Jesus everything the same Mormonism it's not they believe in a plethora of gods and they do believe that they're going to become gods themselves one day okay so let's uh, continue to listen but my question stands, according to Jason Whitlock, Greenbeck was going to go there and teach about history. But before he started teaching, whatever else transpired over there, Greenbeck started with his testimony and has just told the audience that he gave his life to Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. To do, and unfortunately, the only way you can do that is if you're driven to your knees. I had no other place. I was on my carpet. I was living in a uh, an apartment complex. I had lost my family and my children and my job and everything else. And I was on the carpet in this little apartment that I called the United Nations building because I was the only one that lived there that spoke any English. Uh, and I remember being on the ground, feeling sorry for myself. And I realized I was either going to repeat my mother's life, or I was going to get up and get up every day after and beg the Lord for help. Three years later, I was baptized and my life changed overnight. Whatever is happening in your life, shed it, shed it. You are so much more powerful. Believe me, I wouldn't be able to be here today. <laughs> Mark knows about the media. He wouldn't make it, I wouldn't have made it if I had something to hide. You terrify people when you have no, nothing to hide. You're like, well, we're gonna be looking into you. Go ahead. <laughs> and you terrify them. Well, this has been a slow, impact. We won't make it through the next New Year's if men don't stand up, men of God and peace, people who understand the full armor of God. That's not sending you into a war with a gun, that's sending you into battle with God and the truth and peace. Which God? Which God is Grand Beck going to send you with the armor to go and fight the battle? We have to be honest, guys. Huh? It sounds so good, but if you look under the hood, he's not talking about the same thing. According to him, he had to, uh, he, his life changed after he, got, after he got baptized. So when did Greenberg's life change? After the baptism, because they have to put you in the in the in the uh, <laughs> in the baptismal waters, okay? So baptism plays a very significant role in the Mormon doctrine. Okay, as a Christians, you get baptized. It's an outward, it's an outward expression of something that has uh, happened inside. There will be people in heaven who have never been baptized. You do not get saved via baptism. Baptism does not save anybody. So your life has to change after you confess your sins and you repent and you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You when you believe the gospel, okay? His birth, a virgin birth, perfect life. Uh, died on the cross three days later, he rose again and he seated at uh, the right hand of God. And one day he's going to come to judge the living and the dead. Be that as it may, what Greenberg just articulated over here, it sounds so good, but it does not comport to the scriptures. But let's listen in. And the sword of that truth, his word, they are afraid. Why do you think they're silencing everybody? They are terrified of the truth. Speak the truth. If you don't know how to find the truth, Get your face back into the scriptures. The only thing that will be your compass now in these confusing times, because remember, even the very elect, elect will be deceived. You must be one with the Spirit of God. You must have the ever-present Spirit of the Holy Spirit with you. And when it says, turn around, go back, head the other way, you better do it. And it's a muscle. The more you obey, the stronger the voice gets. There you have it. Okay? And to me... This, this was a bad move uh, on Jason Whitlock's part. To everything that I've listened to Jason Whitlock, from what I see, from what I'm hearing, I think, to me, Jason Whitlock is a new, he, he's new in the faith. He does not understand the intricates of, like, okay, why shouldn't the moment not be there? Yes, they believe something different, but he doesn't, and he doesn't grasp the implications of it. He does not understand the implications of it. And then it makes things worse when you have somebody like Jason Whitlock. 
he's doing uh, this type of um, conference, then like, you know, he, he's cool with Vodi, right? Vodi is going to come. Um, Copa is going to come, okay? These are giants in the faith. So when you have, quote-unquote, it's, it's kind of like you're having a stamp of those guys, so you think what you're doing is okay. Vodi Bokam's um, stance is he is going to go anywhere he's invited so long as he's able to say whatever he wants to say and he's going to preach the word of God. And Vodi is a solid teacher. Cooper is the same way. He's going to go anywhere else he's invited. That's why, you know, he, whenever he's doing music, he'll do music with securities and everything. But his thing is, I'm going to go there. I'm going to preach the truth and everything. So everything that I know, Cooper, he's been faithful in doing so. Everything I know about Vod, he's been faithful in doing so. But the point I'm saying, just because Vod is willing to do those things, that doesn't mean that it is okay. Because now here you are, you have Green Bake, who is talking about Jesus, and it's not the same Jesus. Vod doesn't trip on that issue, okay? Because he knows. But you have people in your audience who follow Jason Whitlock. Now, tomorrow, they're going to drink in the milk and the curry that Green Bay is giving them. So what are you going to tell those people? Because they're going to be like, no, Vody was there. Jason Whitlock was there. Copa was there. Uh, Pastor Walker was there. This this person, this person was there. You see what I'm saying? So it's like what you're creating, you're make, um, it becomes, it's a syncretism. Okay, you're bringing all these people from walks of life so long as they name the name of Jesus. Okay, come in. Oh, all of you are welcome. That's not how it works, guys. It does not work like that. Christianity is exclusive. If anybody wants to come in, they are welcome to come in, but they have to buy into the program. We, are, we do not entertain <laughs> the outside program, okay? So if you're going to have a conference, right? Like you just want to have a conference, men, uh, you, you want men to come there, no problem. Let them come. But if you're going to have speakers and those speakers are going to invoke the word of God, they better be invoking the uh, Yahweh, nothing else. There's no excuse on that issue. Okay, so if Graham Baker was just going to be on the stage, all he has to talk about is history, there's no problem. He'll talk about history, off he go. But Graham Baker has just talked about Jesus. Graham Baker has just talked about how he came to faith. Graham Baker is talking about the Holy Spirit. And mind you, that's not the Holy Spirit, uh, that's not the, uh, the third member of the Trinity that he's talking about. Okay, because I'm like, Jason, what are you doing? <laughs> So that's it's unfortunate. So now, are you telling me after Graham Beck has said all those things that somebody stood up and went there and corrected the record? Oh, by the way, the Jesus that uh, Graham Beck is talking about is not the Jesus we believe. In. Of course not. They cannot do that, right? It's 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 what under the bridge is straight. So those things you just avoid by not inviting those people. If you invite them, you make it clear to them. If you're gonna go on the stage. You cannot talk about anything else. This is what you're going to talk about because of the implications that uh, that will just come with it. If it's just, you know, we're just going to chill over here, you, you guys can go and chill over there, okay? I love Vodi. It's just like, okay, you know, good, solid preacher guy, but this is the problem now because somebody is going to say, ah, okay, Vodi is co-signing Green Bay, okay, which means Green Bay is okay. But Green Bay is not okay. We need to witness to Green Bay so he can bow the knee to Jesus. And he's not going to bow a knee to Jesus because he's the one who's telling you that you guys need to, uh, to you know, be in the scriptures. Which scriptures, by the way? Because they believe uh, the Book of Mormon is on par with, with the scriptures. There's nothing that's on par with the scriptures. The scriptures is the word of God. The Book of Mormon is not the word of God, okay? That is just uh, Smith who wrote that issue. There's nothing there that comes even, there's nothing that comes close to the scriptures. So you can never elevate any book above the scriptures, let alone put anything in, on the same par as the scriptures. You can't. That's what the moments do. That's what the moments do. So, all in all, Jason, if you you can have Rocco, I support those things. I think it's good things where you have men are coming there. They, you know, they want to be, you know, promoting this patriarchy. Yes, and amen. Those are good things and everything. But now, instead of people learning everything, whatever they learn, now all eyes are on what? The stuff that Green Becky brought over there. So now it defeats the purpose. So now you have to go and start cleaning up in Ayo Green Becky. The young people who were there. You see what I'm saying? Because now you're going to tell, oh, but you know, uh, oh, they're going to think the Mormons and the Christians believe the same thing. They use the word Jesus, but they don't mean the Jesus of the scriptures. 
So pay attention to such things. We welcome people uh, getting together. We welcome men coming together. But you have to be clear when it comes to the word of God. There is no room for compromising. There is no point to be causing confusion to other fellow believers. So in my opinion, I don't think, uh, I believe Jason is a baby Christian. He just doesn't understand the implication of these things. If he did with everything that I've seen, I don't think he would do it. I think uh, Pastor Spencer also uh, spoke with him. He was uh, he was in studio with him. So I think he's getting certain things, which is fine. But hopefully this will be a lesson that he's learned. And then he can see as to why he was receiving pushback long before this uh, issue happened. Now that the conference has happened and the things that people were saying have proven to be true, is Jason Whitlock going to apologize for calling out protestia that they can kiss? So here's another clip of uh, Glenn Beck just to show you guys that he does not believe the same things that Christians do believe. Here we go. Failure is not the end. Nor was this stain on American justice yesterday. It is simply a stepping stone to the path of greatness. A stepping stone to make America great again. That's not just a slogan for a campaign. That is true. We have lost our way. We have become an embarrassment for everything we say we stand for. Each fall teaches us resilience. Each setback strengthens our determination. Every time the bully knocks us down and says, stay down, every time we get up, there's someone in the crowd watching who then turns our way and sees the bully for who they really are. Oh, Lord, hear the words of my mouth. Save our republic. But he will only match us. If we don't get up, he will not help us. If we don't follow him, he will not, he cannot help us. So what we have in front of us today is a decision. Do we get up or do we lie down face down in the dirt? What is possibly worth taking these beatings? Donald Trump is just a symbol. He's a symbol of what bullies do to anyone who refuses to play it my way. To stay down. Bullies come to town all the time. And they teach everybody in town, go along, get along, whisper. Don't you even whisper. Don't you try to help that beaten man stand up. Don't do it. We must decide. Will we stand idly by while the crowds chant Barabbas? We want Barabbas. There you have it, guys. So this is uh, Glenn Beck. According to him, he says we need to get up. So he's talking about this after, you know, Trump has been found guilty and we need to do something about it. If we don't do anything, God is not going to help us. We need to be helping God. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the God of the Mormon because they believe God was a man at some point, right? And he became God. So we also, they're also going to become gods one day. So they do not believe that God is an, incre is an uncreated being who does not need your hands or my hands. He does not need our help in any way, shape or form. We are the ones who need God. So that's what he believes. You see what I'm saying? So in his doctrine, it makes sense. They have to do something to help God. They might use the terminology of Barabbas. You're familiar with that issue. No, 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 no. So it's not a small thing. The differences that Christians have with Mormonism, it's, it's not even close. This is not like, ah, these are just quote-unquote secondary issues. They are not. They are salvific issues. They are salvific issues, okay? You, uh, the God of Mormon does not save. The Jesus of Mormon cannot save you 
and he does not save because he's not a real Jesus. So you need to put your faith in the real Jesus, the God of the scriptures to be saved. That's it. There's only one way. It's through Jesus Christ. He's the truth, the way, and the life. Anything else is fake. Anything else is not real. Anything else is not true. So, yes, we want, uh, the you know, Grain Beck is a good teacher. All those things are true about him. But when it comes to the doctrine that he teaches, you do not want to promote that in any way, shape, or form. You do not even want to do um, the appearance of you endorsing him in any way, shape, or form. So, it's unfortunate that these things happen. When you have the big wigs also attending these issues, like ah, it muddies, it, it does muddy up the waters. So hopefully, Jason will be able to see this. He's surrounded with good godly men. Okay, I'm sure over there, Brother Walker will be able like, okay, I see where this thing is coming from. You know, yeah, because he did share a uh, quote unquote the gospel. So. Hopefully, you know, this, everybody we can learn, especially if you're a public speaker, you're a public figure, you conduct conferences and everything. So use this as an opportunity to learn, to be wise, who you platform, the, the, the subject that you're platforming, and the things that are going to go over there, because it does matter. It matters. It matters. So the scripture I just want to share with you guys, Ephesians 5, 15, 17. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. All right, guys, but I'm interested to know what you guys think about this whole situation. Do you think it's a big deal or it's just an honest mistake? We can let it go and just move on. What lessons can you learn from this? And how should we be helpful to other people who can find themselves in this situation? Is it okay to have a Mormon to speak, to share about Jesus Christ at the conference where it's all mixed up with other believers? How should we handle that situation? I'm interested to know. All in all, I wish uh, I wish Jason Whitlock all the best. I watch his channel. I support him. I think the thing that he's trying to do is definitely good. But the scripture is clear. When you have people who are no converts, who are no believers, they should not be teachers. So these are the things that can uh, that can easily happen. But he, you know, he's surrounded with good, solid men who will be happy to uh, help him along the way. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.